Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later, we're going to be talking about uh, sexual trafficking and what can be done here in Colorado about it. But first, a, something that uh, just fascinates me so much, which is how space is going to operate for us on a private sector. So the case for space, Robert Zuban, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. All right. First of all, who are you? Why, why, why should I listen to you? Okay, well, I am an astronautical engineer. I've worked in the uh, business for over 30 years. Uh, and I've seen a lot of things happen and a lot of things not happen that could have happened or should have happened. All right, so you're, 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 you're an engineer, full pocket protector, you know what you're talking about. Absolutely. All right. Now, let me talk to you. Slide uh, rule two. Do you actually know how to use a slide rule? I do. Because I was of the age where you didn't need it anymore, so I missed it by that much. I mean, it's amazing to me we sent people to, to the moon with slide rules. It, it is amazing. Technology has changed so that in all sorts of industries, it's becoming democratized, whether it's making movies or making albums or all sorts of things, but also when it comes to space travel. We used to depend solely on NASA to, to reach the moon and to do other things in space. That's changing. Tell me, tell me the story. Well, um, NASA did a fantastic job in its first decade of 1958 to 1969, 70, 72. Uh, we went from zero space capability to landing people on the moon. We developed all the different space technologies that we have today. But um, NASA at that time was very mission driven. Okay, and all parts of it, in particular the manned space flight. We were going to astonish the, pe the world with what free people could do, and we did. Okay, but after that mission was accomplished, um, while the science programs remained largely mission driven, the space telescopes, the robots to Mars, this kind of stuff, the human space flight program, lacking a mission, became vendor driven. Okay, and rather than spending money to do things, it started to doing things to spend money. And uh, as a result, it has drifted for 40 years. And along with the human spaceflight program, the heavy lift launch development kind of uh, programs which were associated with it also drifted. Let me see if I can put that into terms I understand. Uh, I've, I'm of the age that I remember the idea of uh, the space shuttle. I remember it being rolled out. I remember the catastrophes. And it always seemed like a contraption. I, like it really wasn't, it looked like it was designed by committee and it was spent. It, was it, was it a, something to send people? Was it to do this? Was it to do that? And the idea was the government was going to get into the business of sending things into space for, for private sector. That never really worked out. No, it didn't. And, and I think fundamentally the space shuttle was conceived of as an activity rather than as a mission. It was a, a, a program designed to preserve NASA as a force in being. Okay, that is, you had this tremendous technical team that had been put together for Apollo and they wanted to preserve it. So rather than give it a new mission, like going to Mars, they said, well, we'll just fly this thing up and down. And so there were a few shuttle missions, notably the launch and repair and upgrade of the Hubble Space Telescope that you can really hang your hat on and say, they did something grand. But most of the shuttle missions were just flying in order to fly. And, uh, but here's the thing, we've got a revolution now because um, of frustration with the stagnation in this area, uh, entrepreneurs have stepped forward. They started stepping forward in the 90s. None of them had the capital to pull it off. But in 2001, one stepped forward that did. Okay, and that's, of course, Elon Musk. And what Musk and the SpaceX team have shown is that it's possible for a well-led, lean, mean, entrepreneurial team to do things that were previously thought that only the governments of major powers could do and do it in a third the time at a tenth the cost and even do things they couldn't do oh, at all. Slow down, slow down. A third the time, a tenth the cost. Put some meat on that. What are we talking about? Well, uh, actually, those are uh, conservative numbers. Uh, in 2010, Norm Augustine, the former CEO of uh, Lockheed Martin, was leading a blue ribbon panel for President Obama to evaluate the Bush Moon program, and they said it was impossible because developing a heavy lift vehicle would take 12 years and cost $36 billion. Well, Musk did it in six years for under $1 billion. And not only that, the vehicle, Falcon Heavy, which flew for the first time a year ago, is three quarters reusable. So it, it was developed for a 30th the development cost and it'll fly for about a 10th the recurring cost. Are companies using private sector, company, other co companies to get things into space? 
I, you know, are the Russians, are the Chinese, are the Americans? We have, we've got satellites that need to go up there. How are they getting up there now? For a while, wasn't it just big, dumb rockets that mostly Russia put out? Uh, well, the Russians certainly had their share and, and have their share of the launch market. But, um, and, and of course, the Fortune 500, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, so forth over here. But last year, for example, there were 100 satellite launches done in the whole world. SpaceX got a quarter of them. Okay, one medium-sized company taking a quarter of all the satellite launches in the world. Half of those were off limits because they were Russian or Chinese military launches. So they basically took half the world market. Okay, they launched a bunch of satellites yesterday for Canada. The, the, they launched 60 satellites of their own a month ago to start building their own uh, global communication system called Starlink. Um, the, the, you, know, you, said something, you said something I want to get clarification on. You said this medium-sized company. It, it's not a massive company compared to what NASA contracts with or traditionally uses. When you say medium-sized company, Describe that. Well, um, Lockheed Martin, last time I looked, had about 170,000 workers. SpaceX had 6,000. So it's not a small company. It's not a, 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 what you'd call a small business. But it's very small compared to Lockheed Martin or Boeing. Um, and uh, they're, they're wiping the floor with them. And their model, when they do work for the government, is not cost plus, we'll do it, just keep paying us, we'll charge you our cost plus 10%. They do fixed price, okay? And so their incentives are to get it done as quickly, as cheaply as possible, okay? And that's what they do. Talk to me about the, the potential of, about this. I mean, I've heard about space tourism, and before you know it, there are gonna be rich guys taking a, a flight up and then falling back down to Earth, and it's gonna be a plaything for the rich. But what does it mean to guys like you and me. Okay, well, I've never been excited about the business plans of flying four minutes up, having a little zero gravity, and coming down and paying $200,000 for it. Okay, yeah, If you had $200,000, you might feel differently. And if I had $200,000, I actually do have $200,000, and I am not spending it that way. Okay, the, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, but reusable launch vehicles, which is what SpaceX and also... Uh, Blue Origin and several emulators are now uh, developing, okay, make possible the dream of surface-to-surface -surface travel on Earth anywhere, anywhere in less than an hour. Space is a global ocean with zero drag. You know, people have made money on the ocean for 3,000 years, some by fishing, but much more through commerce, using the ocean as a low-drag medium connecting every port to every port. Space connects every city to every city. Okay. Now, do you, it's, do you it's, seriously envision a time where I want to I want to go to the middle of Europe or in the middle of Africa, and instead of going on to uh, United Airlines, it will actually be cost effective for me to take a ride through space and land there? Well, uh, initially, I think it will be from port cities, so you could have the space ports on rafts. Uh, a few kilometers out so the noise isn't an issue. But Los Angeles to Sydney in less than an hour. If you've ever flown to Australia and <laughs> spent 18 hours in the plane, you know this is worth it. Now, Musk, very interestingly, on his uh, reusable launch vehicle that he's developing now, which is the one that would do this, is called, he calls it Starship, but it's not a ship that goes to the stars. It's just its name. Okay. It uses methane oxygen propellant. Now that's very interesting because it's a fairly high performing propellant, but the thing that really stands out about it is two features. Okay, one, you can make it on Mars out of what's there, so if you wanted to go to Mars and want to make the propellant and come home, okay, that is a driver. But another is, in terms of travel on Earth, it's the cheapest propellant there is. And if you have expendable rockets, it doesn't matter how much the propellant costs, whether it's 10 cents a gallon or $10 a gallon, because you're throwing away the whole rocket and the fuel cost is insignificant. But if you're keeping the rocket, now you start counting fuel costs. And um, in the book, I discuss this, and I work the numbers. And if we're talking first-generation Starship, um, the passenger cost, Los Angeles to Sydney, would probably be like $20,000. Now, that's, that's all. That's all. That's what people pay for first class tickets for a Los Angeles to Sydney right now. And all they're getting is a tablecloth and a free drink and a bigger chair. They're still sending 18 hours in the plane. Here, you're getting there in less than an hour. You're getting a half hour of zero gravity and seeing the stars of space through the windows. And 
Um, I can see corporate executives doing that in order to get to the meeting on time. And, uh, and then as this thing grows, I mean, look, you had 100 satellite launches in the world last year. You have hundreds of intercontinental flights every hour. Okay, so now you're talking about a much bigger market which will accelerate space development. We're going to run out of time before, before we can get to this. I, I want to talk about um, outside of this planet. Will we be able to go to the moon? When I was a kid, the expectation was, you, John, you will spend time on the moon. Hell, look at the movie 2001. You know, there are no space hotels. There's no Pan Am flights to the moon. Uh, will this make that possible? And what would drive that? Well, it will. Um, because if you multiply the number of space launches there are by a factor of a thousand, which this will, you're going to drive down the cost of space launch every which way. Driving down the cost of space launch will drive forward the development of space technology, both because there'll be more flights and because designers of spacecraft won't have to be so conservative, They're not spending a billion dollars per launch, they're spending a million dollars per launch. They can take more chances on trying out new technologies. Spacecraft will become more efficient, they'll become cheaper. Um, and all sorts of things will become possible. So we're talking about opening up the solar system here. And, and look, I, I got to tell you, I know Musk. Um, I, I, I did help convince him to make Mars his calling. I won't take full credit for it, but my earlier book, The Case for Mars, clearly had an influence on him. And he's not doing SpaceX to make money. He can make money any, doing anything. He can make money setting up a chain of furniture stores. A lot easier than starting a rocket company. Okay. He's doing this because he wants to do something of enduring importance with his life, something that would not happen if he didn't make it happen, okay? And he's making it happen. And you walk into SpaceX, there's a giant photograph of Mars on the wall. Every employee walks past it, they see Mars. They know that's what the mission is. They are doing this to make humanity a multi-planet spacefaring species. And, and they're going to do it. And not only that, even if Musk should fail, because he might. Musk's a risk taker. He sk skates close to the edge of the ice. Anybody who observes him can see that. It doesn't matter because he has proven that it is possible for entrepreneurs to do this. Many others are jumping into the ring. If he should fall, others will pick up the banner Last at this question. point. Last question. What is the one thing that's going to be the hurdle for that? In other words, I'm talking policy-wise, my world. What is going to trip this up so that it's going to take twice as long in other words, what's government going to do to mess this up? Well, uh, entrenched interests. Right now, in fact, uh, President Trump uh, has a moon program to try to get to the moon by 2024. And uh, it's actually probably not going to happen unless they can say we're not going to go with the entrenched interests. Falcon Heavy is flying now. We don't have to wait for SLS, the Space Launch System. Falcon Heavy, okay, it's two-thirds the capability projected for SLS, but it's available SLS. now, Space Launch System. Got it. Okay, two-thirds the capability, one-tenth the cost. They've got a capsule called Dragon that weighs less than half of what the Orion Space Capsule does. The, the, in other words, a free market requires a free customer. So what we have to do is free NASA. Okay, and furthermore, there'll be other bureaucratic obstacles. This concept of surface to surface travel will certainly have opponents, um, and we have to make sure that it doesn't get murdered by people who, you know, are just uh, either ignorant or are trying to defend the old regime. All that and more. Robert, thank you so much. This case for space, I could talk to you for days. It's all in here. All right. Stay tuned.